Hello everybody and welcome to Cubone, my name is Quinton. And to kick things off, if you can hear my air conditioner running in the background, normally I turn it off when I'm recording, but it's it's too hot in here. I can't, it's absurd. But regardless, welcome to Cubone, my name is Quinton, and today is another Helldivers 2 weekly recap for the week of July 31st through August 6th. And we had a very important win this week, with us bisecting the automaton forces completely, splitting them between the northern and southern hemispheres of their forces. Front. Now every planet to the south of that line will be just that much easier to take out and liberate in the name of Super Earth. But we have to be wary of the Northern Assault, lest they take advantage of that front. Meanwhile on the bot front, a lot of movement north from the Jin Z sector which was recently liberated up into the Draco sector, making very slow progress, but progress nonetheless. That said, with no further ado, we'll get into the specifics of this week's news. Before I begin, I did miss something on the news last Tuesday, that being the defense of X-45. It began around 5 a.m. Tuesday morning, and only 2,000 divers arrived to fight the bots off before the defense completed around 9 a.m. Because we cleared Vega Bay at the same time, that cut off the bot forces and saved the planet, with us barely having to touch down planetside at all. And through the rest of Tuesday, we had moved through Virilia 5, getting it to almost 40 5% by the time I made last week's video, and I was predicting that we would move on to Wezen. Wezen. But as Wednesday kicked off, with Virilia 5 being liberated around 10 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, with a maximum of over 24,000 making their mark on the system, I was surprised to see that 23,000 of those divers flooded onto Ustatu, rather than Wezen, Wezen like I assumed. While Virilia 5 was wrapping up, Wezen, Wezen was liberating much faster, but through Wednesday we pushed Astatu to nearly 40%, while 4,000 and 2,000 respectively were continuing to fight on Astanu and Wezen. Wezen. We only had a day and a half to liberate two planets for the Major Order, and Ustatu continued gradually rising through Thursday, rising to 67.5% by 9am, with Astanu inching forward at 27%. Look, Astatu and Astanu are very similar. Similar. And this this is gonna take me a while to record. You guys don't have to worry about it. I have edited this already. This continued on through the evening with Estatu being fully liberated by 7 p.m. that night. This could not be said for Estanu, which went into free fall, dropping to 21% by 8 p.m. while Wezen Wezen saw a rise to 16% with an estimated 27 hours left until liberation. Of course, player count dropped for the night as always, but rose back up to over 20,000. But with three hours on the major order in the final planet 15 hours out from liberation, divers had to watch as time ran out. Major order failed. The valiant sacrifice of millions of our most well-trained and brave heroes was not enough to pry free the collectivist death grip on our stolen worlds. The automatons have now deployed orbital cannons across the entire domain, another metallic thorn in the side of liberty. The pilot shortages have been replenished and additional training will limit further impacts to extraction times. Even so, Helldiver missions to destroy these cannons will remain remain critical to the war effort in perpetuity. This actually kind of sucks. Divers already don't enjoy playing bots as much as they do bugs, and failing a major order like this, as well as what was coming later in the week, eh, it's not a good look for the bot side of things. This is only going to get worse with the new enemy types coming with the new update. The bug enemy types look interesting but difficult. Meanwhile, the bot enemy types are, let's take the existing things that people struggle with and throw rockets on them. It's just kind of going to create a problem and I don't know, I'm not really looking forward to it, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Even though we failed the major order, we still managed to clear the vast majority of the southern bot front and I think that's quite commendable. We weren't done with the bots just yet though as a new major order came in. Briefing, High Command has ordered an efficacy review of the currently available mine stratagems. To enable this review, the Helldivers are ordered to kill or dismantle the targeted number of Liberty's enemies. If the targeted number is not reached, High Command will specially authorize the urgent addition of anti-tank mines to the Helldivers repertoire. If the targeted number of enemies are eliminated, then the currently available mine stratagems will be deemed sufficient and no additions will be authorized at this time. High Command might be done with our shit. We impressively took down 1 billion terminates, sure, but far less players play the bot front, and the goal is higher than before, at 1.5 billion. Given the nature of the order, it would have been cool to see mines have a bonus to the goal, meaning that if we used those, the missions would be easier. Sure, in-universe that might not make sense, but if we're trying to gauge the efficacy of the mines, 
using the mines should add more to the major order. Not only would that give us a better chance to complete it, but it would also mean that the gameplay ties into the story a little better. As it was, the most divers returned to the bug front, disregarding the MO to liberate Estanu. It wasn't entirely senseless though, since the liberation of the Jin Z sector, no progress had been made on the bug front, given the bot focus in the major orders. We'd raised Estanu to 30%, and though Wes and Weizen on the bot front had plateaued below 75%, divers were still pushing for the planet's liberation, albeit more slowly. Through Saturday, more divers fought through both planets, nearly 20,000 getting Estanu to 47.5% by the afternoon, and 7,000 getting Weizen Wesen to 82% by the same time. The major order, however, was moving far too slowly, breaking 22% Saturday evening, leaving us far behind schedule. I guess we're getting those mines after all. As Sunday kicked off, we continued pushing Astanu, repeatedly breaking 20,000 divers despite the attack on Marfark around 11 a.m. Sunday morning. This wasn't a cause for concern, however, as we not only cleared Astanu around 5 p.m., but were maintaining a healthy lead on several other planets. Crimsica, directly south of Astanu, had 13.5 thousand divers, pushing to widen our influence in the Draco sector, while 7,000 and 5,000 were on Marfark and Wesen, Wesen, respectively. With the bots still scattered due to the divers' efforts, we had a healthy advantage on both planets. Despite this, though, we were still behind on the major order, not even breaking 50%, with a little over 30 hours to go. In brighter news, as Monday began, we not only held Marfark against the bots' meager efforts, but we took Wesen, Wesen from their cold metallic clutches, freeing the Ymir sector and finally bisecting the automaton war machine. Meanwhile, over 17,000 divers rose Crimsica to 26.8% and 4,000 moved to Vandalon 4 to continue scrapping the toasters. By evening, both player counts had risen by around 2,000, Crimsica rapidly approaching 50% liberation while Vandalon 4 was approaching 5%. Once again though, the major order was in a dire place. In less than 18 hours, we'd gotten more than 10% closer to our goal, but with less than 12 hours to go. And the result was clear. Around 3 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time, we did fail the major order, and High Command deemed us in need of the anti-tank mines at last. Major order failed. The failure to eliminate the targeted numbers of enemies using the currently available arsenal has made clear the need for additional weaponry. Therefore, High Command has ordered the immediate large-scale production of anti-tank mines. They will be available fleet-wide in short order. This rapid rollout is expensive and will divert funds previously set aside for schoolyard air quality improvement. But the defense of freedom is prioritized above all. Without it, there will be no schoolyards left to improve. Around 10 a.m., a new major order did begin kicking off the new update, and before I read it, some things about said update. First, difficulty 10 was added despite the horrible balancing of other difficulties, and apparently it is causing some performance issues already, with too many bugs for the game to process. Alongside this were some new objectives that I've been unable to try yet, so I won't be talking about them. While there's been some buffs, it's mostly nerfs for weapons and stratagems, namely the nerf to fire damage to, quote, work more realistically. This means it no longer works on armor, making things like the flamethrower, incendiary impact grenades, and even the weapons from the upcoming war bond far less effective than they need to be. The flamethrower no longer has a reason to take up a slot, so I'm retiring my favorite stratagem. Some things like the gunship patrols have been improved, with gunships now being easier to destroy and spawning less frequently. A proper fix to grief kicking has also been implemented, where you'll be placed in a new instance rather than removed from the game entirely. Overall, with the new enemies being egregious and the tools to beat them being nerfed, it's hard to feel excited about the escalation of freedom. To get back to the news, however, a new major order was announced as a new planet was attacked. Briefing. A sudden terminate wave has overrun Seaf outer recon posts on the planet Socorro 3. Scattered reports indicate the presence of new terminate variants. These reports are likely exaggerations, products of a less than elite training. However, the terminate incursion is undoubtable. Additionally, an unusual interstellar phenomenon has been detected in the vicinity of Socorro 3. An interstellar terminate spore cloud of unusual size and density. While terminates are known to send spores between planetary space, nothing of this magnitude has 
has been previously seen. The cloud may in part explain the presence of the sudden terminate incursion. The situation is being monitored closely. Out of an abundance of caution, the Helldivers were ordered to deploy to Socorro 3 and eradicate as many terminates as possible, including likely non-existent, never-before-seen variants. The Helldivers are also ordered to liberate all nearby planets to prevent the possible spread of any new terminates that may or may not exist. So the bugs now have a Galactus Cloud, and who knows where it's going. Divers quickly rush to Socorro's aid, reinforcements raising higher than we've seen in months, maxing out around 58,000 with a total player count of over 80,000, but still barely staying ahead of the bugs' threat to democracy. This defense left Crimsonka right on the brink of liberation, with 7,000 divers fighting to keep it from falling back into the bug's claws. It still fared better than the bot front, however, with the last two systems in the Trigon sector remaining unliberated for the time being. And that does wrap up my notes for this week's Helldivers 2 Weekly Recap. Now, unfortunately, if you watched last week, you already know this is likely to be my last Helldivers 2 Weekly Recap. I was on the fence about it before, but I realized with this update and recording footage for it, I'm not playing the game anymore. I get my news from different sources across the internet, and I play the game once a week for 20 to 40 minutes tops to get footage for the videos, but aside from that, my gameplay is ground to a halt, and when I play, I'm not really enjoying it. So overall, the game's been great for the channel and just to play in general, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to call it. I am moving on to more Call of Duty Zombies content, as that's what I'm interested in making right now. If my plans work out, I'll either have a video out on the new Call of Duty Zombies trailer by now, or it'll be out later today. Either way, that's gonna be the trend from now on. Now, I am going to be taking all of the Helldivers 2 weekly recaps and putting them into a playlist for anybody who wants to see them, see how we progressed from early March up until now. But beyond that, I think that's gonna be it for Helldivers for me. We just got a new update, plenty of new divers, new objectives, things like that, and I'm not interested. I thought maybe the update would pull me back in, there'd be new stuff, but the new enemies aren't fun to fight. The new equipment, uh, that being the anti-tank mines, I doubt I'm going to be interested in them. And my favorite ways of playing are gone. This is very similar to the railgun debacle that happened months ago. It was a lot of people's favorite way to play, and it's gone. It no longer exists. So overall, the game has been great. I hope you guys still enjoy it. I hope you guys continue to play. If you're liking the game, please keep playing. I'm probably going to check back in every once in a while and see how things are going, but no more videos on the game from now on. That said, I hope you guys will join me on this journey into Black Ops Zombies. With Black Ops 6 coming out this October, I have a good handful of videos planned to come out before that, and when the game comes out, I'll be covering it pretty heavily. On top of that, I'm also working on a little bit of Dragon Ball content, because the new Sparking Zero is also coming out in October, but that won't be as big on the channel, so, you know. Take what you can get out of it. If it does well, I'll probably do more, but it'll probably be mostly Call of Duty. That said, if you do enjoy my content, I do other streams as well. Right now, there is that big focus on Call of Duty with Thursdays at 4 p.m. playing the Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War campaign. We're almost done with it. I think this week we might actually finish it. On Fridays at 6 p.m., we are doing the Modern Warfare 3 Zombies story missions. And on Fridays at 4 p.m., we are doing Black Ops 4. This week, we'll be starting on Black Blood of the Dead, one of my personal favorite zombies maps, and I hope you guys will join me on that journey, because I'm very much looking forward to it, and I hope to see you guys there. Check me out not only here, but on Twitch. We're actually rapidly approaching affiliate, and we're approaching monetization for the YouTube channel. If you enjoy my content at all, please try and stick around for that. Otherwise, it's been great having you. I really enjoyed you watching my videos and comments, your likes. I I've enjoyed interacting with you, but if, if you're only here for the Helldivers content and you're not interested anymore, I hope you have a good one. For everybody else, I look forward to making new content with you guys. And this won't be the last time I say it, but for those of you that are leaving, remember to be gay and do crimes. And we will see you next time. Bye-bye.